Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor, get ready for Christ Consciousness. Now, I am in my continuing effort to release these secrets of the secrets. Uh, I have uh, released, particularly in this period of time, lots of very potent, powerful information. And if it's, um, if you don't get it, you don't get it. It's as simple as that. If it's not technical enough for you, if it's not fancy enough, if I don't quote enough ancient philosophers like Bonnie Rubble. So the whole idea of that, if you don't get it, uh, you don't get it. So um, this is for very advanced people. And those that are here, I want to thank you for listening to me. You certainly will be rewarded. This is the ultimate truth that I have been releasing for many years. And as I've stated, I've found all the answers. We are in development stages. And I've just found more, and I have released these. Now, uh, the very important energies out there, which we have uh, recently developed, is the tachyon neutrino graviton energy fields, which we have put together in one energy field, which we're accessing right now through our different technologies. And we're soon offer these as an upgrade from our normal tachyon neutrino fields uh, that we have produced to this ultimate field. And this is the energies of the universe. Now, what's very critical about these things, and as I've been talking to this for a little while now, is none of this is electromagnetic. This is the moron level. This is the tricycle level of human thinking that everything is in the electromagnetic spectrum. And if you listen to some scientists, they'll say if it's not in that spectrum, it doesn't exist. Of course, that's very typical of a scientist. If they can't find it in their little pea brain with their tinker toy technologies, uh, with their corrupt thinking, with their goofball aspects in life in general, uh, believing in comic book gods. Or, you know, scientists believe in a whole bunch of weird stuff. And how they can actually be a scientist and also be religious. And I believe most scientists consider themselves religious, which is kind of interesting. Well, without getting to much caught in that. We need to understand what these energies are. Now, why do we need to know that? Well, if you're an engineer like me, a higher level agnostic engineer, an occult engineer, which uh, was a term given to me uh, a few years about, back, which I think is great. It's cult engineer. What is a cult engineer? The hidden engineering. So don't get caught up on that word because some goofball child molesting Christian or religious person told you it's bad, it's bad. Well, it's nonsense. That word used to be used as the hidden within scientific circles. Now it's been fouled by basically the bad people that want to keep you in a delusional state of thinking. But here I diverse like I usually am. But we have to understand what these are. Why do we have to? How are we going to make detectors? How are we going to make amplifiers? How are we going to make antennas to draw these in to use these energies? Well, we have to know what there are. You, and this has been a problem for a long time because all of our technology, including our, quote, uh, biophysical, our bioconsciousness energies, have really been based on making tools that are electromagnetic in nature, uh, using metals and so forth. Because people are using metals because they think they're moving some sort of electromagnetic energy, and this somehow helps the process. Well... This is just not true. Now, the ancients used certain metals, particularly gold, and of course, they do transfer electromagnetic energies at a high level. They're very conductive. Yes, but that's not the point. You're, you're seeing the forest uh, instead of the tree. You're not understanding what's going on there. Yes, they're highly conductive of all energies. That's why gold silver, copper, and all of these precious metals uh, have always been valued and still are today. But there's much, much more to it. As a matter of fact, their electromagnetic capacities are just one of the many that they have, and basically their crudest one. But certainly, if you want uh, high energy to flow uh, in the electromagnetic spectrum, uh, having gold plated, copper plated, etc., but you'll see many electronic components uh, that use gold plated. Uh, Components And they do this because it helps the flow of energy because gold is very high for that, as I've mentioned. But that is not really what we're talking about when we get into these uh, particular advanced uh, spectrums of energy. 
Now, as I've said many, many times, uh, they have taken people and put them in Faraday cages, which eliminates electromagnetism. Uh, they uh, contacted people in submarines, you know, miles under the water. Uh, people have been put in bank vaults uh, thousands of miles away, and they get psychic messages without a problem. The biophysical penetrates everything because it's not electromagnetic in uh, understanding. So what I'm stating here is super important. So make note of this. Make sure you download these and listen to them often. It's important that you have your own copies. So What does that do? Well, if we start thinking non-electromagnetic, that changes the way everything is made. So we're going to be coming out in the near future uh, with very advanced uh, energy machines that use the more uh, es um, esoteric energy. Oftentimes, uh, you know, they used to call it the ether out there before we got into uh, other things. And the ether was a big theory uh, out there of what the energies were. And this is what, of course, all the ancients used. The ancients didn't run wires and use electromagnetism. Uh, there are some ancient, quote, batteries, which are direct current type uh, batteries. But uh, what was ran to power things was using ether or non-electromagnetic energies. Well, what is that? Well, you can't prove it. You can't find it. Well, yes, we can. Yeah, All this stuff that scientists say is uh, non-physical and can't be found is because they're not researching it. They're taking their hundreds of billions of dollars and putting it into dry holes again. If they develop these sciences the way they should be, we could have all sorts of meters to detect all these non-electromagnetic fields as well as everything else. But we deny regular science right now. We have free energy. It's called hydrogen power. Why aren't we using it? Well, why aren't we? That's a good question. Maybe you should ask that to every stooge you see on the street, your stupid professors and everybody else out there that wants to feed you garbage. Why aren't we used a known and developed technology uh, that can solve all of our needs. Well, it's called insanity and evil. It's evil insanity not to use something. So what do we say about that? That's a whole other issue. And I've talked about this before, but think about that. Think about when answers are come here, when we have solutions, and we just take our arms and scrape them off the table and say, we're not going to use it. Well, we have it. Here's the solution. We're not. What, what do you do from that point on? There's nothing really you can do from that point on. The society has proven the low-level evil scum they are, and that means these kind of people have to be taken care of in many ways. But we have to understand that if we can't, if we keep coming up with solutions to try and prove people, uh, prove to um, uh, to give to people who are supposed to use it, and they refuse to use working technology, well, what, what's the point of anything? And that's right. There is no point in anything. And everyone has to understand that as a Christ consciousness thinker. So, let's talk about the electromagnet. Electromagnetic. And of course, this has always been the hang up and what people keep seeking because, again, we have meters for it. We can understand it we, uh, and so forth. It doesn't mean that it's the answer. It's like saying that a car is really the paint job. But, you know, once you scrape the paint off, you find out that, well, the car isn't a paint job. It's this whole machine, and there are different layers of it. And there are many different aspects. But, you know, everybody's looking at the electromagnetic paint job saying, well, that's the car. Well, it's just ridiculous. So, these energies that are used through radionics, psychotronics, etc., all of this, anything to do with the biophysical, bioconsciousness, your chakras, your third eye, anything that we talk about all the time and that I have uh, that are listed in many books and where there are different techniques, none of these are electromagnetic in nature. Now, you can hook certain meters up to people and you will get certain very low level readings. Now, Andre Pesharek uh, measured brain waves and so did Bob Beck. And what they measured is that people, and of course, this is just a beginning range. Everybody that they measured there, what they were putting out was this Schumann resonance. 7.8, 8 hertz um, is what they were putting out. 
So anybody who was a healer, anybody doing psychic work went into this level of electromagnetic frequencies. And of course, that's only the uh, measurable frequency. And that's why we haven't had major breakthroughs because we're just getting the measurable, the crude stuff, the kindergarten, the preschool understandings of life. But everyone knows that. Now, that's, of course, why we uh, offer some very advanced um, 7.8 tube resident generators. Now, this produces massive amounts of uh, manifest uh, manifesting energetic informational fields because it's resonance. You can't get that with solid state. Now, people produce 7.8 hertz, and it's nice, and it does help, and it lightens your, your environment. It gives you a certain level of uh, manifesting. But when you do this with tubes, you've got a 1,000% in increase, if not more because you're getting a high level resonance that you can't get with solid state. So I hope everybody understands that and understands the fact that empowerments don't come from the electromagnetic. Now, I don't know how much, I don't know how much of this is going over everybody's heads. They don't, they don't, what's the difference between electromagnetic and not? What's the difference between light and dark? day and night. I mean, that's what we're talking about here. So we're talking about very crude electromagnetic, which is generally measured through Hertzian. Hertzian is a particular measurement of electrical energy. It's how something vibrates every second. Or I'm not sure what the exact definition is, but basically when you get an electromagnetic field that's in Hertz, and that's what you're seeing a putting out there, which was figured out and measured by Mr. Hertz. So the whole idea is that, um, you know, like a typical scientist, he named it after himself. Nine. So the whole idea is that uh, that's what we're accustomed to. That's what we use meters for. That's what our, the what kind of uh, electromagnetic field something puts out. Well, we have meters to tell this. Now, and this does happen. You correct, you can uh, ma make, and you, there are electromagnetic energies around. And the more human energies we have, the more of these fields we create. I mean, this is typical of ghost hunters that lock, walk around looking for electromagnetic fields. Now, very strong electromagnetic fields uh, are very dangerous to you and can cause hallucinations, all sorts of things. If you're around very strong electromagnetic fields, you start warping your mind and brain. You start seeing things and having all sorts of bizarre experiences. But this is a self-induced ayahuasca trip uh, that has meaningless value like most other ayahuasca type trips that don't really mean anything. It's just produced by your mind. But these have exact effects because your mind is, to a certain extent, electric in nature. It's chemical electric. You have chemicals within your brain that cause these firings of these crude energies. Now, you're made up of the electromagnetic uh, energies of how your body works, the body electric, etc. People have heard these terms. And yes, that's how some of the energies in your body flows, the crude ones that we measure. And it is there. And I've always recognized this and made equipment and so forth that uh, access this because we're not sure how strong it is, but we are now. We all know that it's very weak energies. But should we ignore it? Well, I've always tried to incorporate it by making sure that there's some sort of electromagnetic flow there, I meaning you use wires and use other things to kind of grab and flow that electromagnetic energy as you would within your house. So you would run wires to things, that you would have coils and other things that tend to grab these energies. So it's, And of course, we weren't entirely sure back then that uh, things were really based in non-electromagnetic. And the electromagnetic is so weak that it's really not much to bet on. We need to go past that. And this is one reason why all the technology in this field is kind of stalled. The reason why um, uh, radionic and other machines is they're, they're building things all on this electromagnetic. And then, of course, there are people that are actually working with frequency machines, which is 100% electromagnetic. Uh, you know, Rife machines, you put an exact frequency in your body of whatever. This is supposed to go out and cancel out a disease frequencies. And we go on and on. So, uh, and this technology does work too great. We're not really sure how well it works, what it does uh, in the bigger picture. All of this is kind of confusing because uh, it's been suppressed. Uh, so we don't know. And then we have to get secondhand information from basically manufacturers and people pushing the technology that are making money off of it. The problem is that causes a whole level of corruption. So 
it works. It works great, doesn't it? Here, buy it. Well, we can't do that. We need third parties that test this and say, what is the rate of efficiency of it working to the level that we want it? And it can't come from the manufacturer. It has to come from a qualified third party, which is another problem as well. Who's qualified? They're not experts. So you have to depend on the credibility of the manufacturer, which in general doesn't exist. I don't know anybody who's out there who's honest except myself. So the whole idea is that everybody else is corruptible. Everybody else is trying to make a buck because they have to, to survive and life is expensive. So what, what are good ideas are turned into very poor, uh, stinky ideas because people then find out that it is based in how do I make more money? So it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, except it doesn't work. So this is what you run into with so many things. It's, it's a real serious problem and I understand the core of it. Now, what's very interesting in my recent research, so, so what I'm doing here now, and we will have some base models coming out here that are just uh, standard old type machines, but we're going to have other machines um, coming out which are going to be very unique designs uh, based in photons and energy flows that are non-electromagnetic. Because well, as I've mentioned, these powers are really non-electromagnetic. There are people who have been able to light uh, small lights inside pyramids by tapping into that energy. Um, which means, how did they do that? But they put it through wires. Wires actually powered small bulbs in there. So you're actually talking about energies that are etheric in nature that actually can go through and affect things that are based in the electric and even the electromagnetic, which is an interesting combination of things. So, um, but we need to understand that is that's not, if we keep looking to empower things through the electromagnetic, we keep looking to use electrical devices, electrical amplifiers that are non-resident in nature, we're never going to get anywhere. I've been doing that for years using uh, solid state amplifiers uh, and these uh, audio amplifiers, and these just don't do the job. They don't get it strong enough. Once we moved over to tube amplifiers, which pick up resonance, which is basically picking up the non-electromagnetic, uh, we have got excellent results. So the combination of the two is, is important to a certain level, but, uh, you, but if you're not using resident unusual energies and you're just trying to amplify the electromagnetic, you've got a problem. This is like trying to amplify uh, these digital signals now. These digital signals are... Um, excellent for certain things, but they basically hurt uh, the uh, and don't pick up uh, the uh, basically uh, bio consciousness energies. They don't pick up psychic energies or transmit them well at all. So any kind of digital stuff, digital photographs, digital this, well, they're not empty. They, if you project psychic energy, a tiller has done this, the famous scientist, into some sort of electronic device, uh, you were able to put in a uh, signal in there. A, actually embed it with an electromagnetic field to a certain extent, which has a large capacity of psychic or bioenergy in it as well. But you're losing 90% of it. It's just not good technology. You've got to figure out how to... And of course, uh, Tiller, like other ones who study this for years, don't get it. They're, they're not really making divide. They, don't, they want to use what's readily available that they grab off the shelf and they want to use that. Now, these things do work to a certain degree. Uh, digital photographs work to a certain degree, but I don't want to work with 10%. Do you want to work with 10%? And then people want to amplify. You can't amplify. There's nothing to amplify. And then you're using electromagnetic amplifiers, whatever that may be, uh, whether it's computers or other things. It just doesn't work. You're wasting your time. And if you run it through all these amplifications, you're still, if you're lucky, you're getting up to 10, 15% of what available energies are. So you're, that means that you're losing all this. So the whole idea is to go past that and use things that are capturing that resident, vibrational, non-electromagnetic energy. Prime example of that is a Polaroid picture. Polaroid pictures are not in any way digital or electromagnetic. What are they? They're chemical. They're a, they're a chemical there. There's an actual chemical that the photons, and that's very important, the photons picked it up. Now, are photons electromagnetic? Uh, no, no, they're not. That's right. The photons bounce off of the subject. They come back into and go into a chemical that holds it. And we see it because we see the image there. So we know it's the process is working there. 
That's very important. So the whole idea is you just don't want something that is at a low level that's only picking up 10, 15 percent. That is pathetic. That's really bad science. Of course, that's where everybody's stuck. So the whole idea is using anything digital is a bad idea. You want to get past that. It's a great idea for pretty photos. It's a great idea for music and other things. I mean, I never heard music until I heard a CD, which was a play. You could hear every instrument in the CD. And if you had a good sound system, like I had a good Bose five-speaker system back then, even 30 years ago, man, what an experience. I never heard that in records or cassette tapes or anything else. You couldn't hear all the instruments. You can hear every instrument instrument on a CD. So uh, these are all very uh, exciting breakthroughs. But, you know, again, you're talking about um, the difference between, um, but of course that is uh, digital CDs, obviously. So you're picking up things that you normally would lose, but you're not getting resonance there. You're getting a finite signal, uh, which is electromagnetic in nature, making sure that you hear everything. And it's the same thing with digital photographs. Nothing like digital. It's nothing like uh, Blu-rays. 4K, etc. And they're using uh, lots and lots of, you know, 4K means 4,000 lines in your screen. So you're talking about not entirely, what is it, 4,000 per inch or whatever. Uh, compared to uh, regular CDs, which are 1,000, I think Blu-rays are 2,000. Don't hold me to those numbers, but you're talking about going up to this amount, which gets you more clarity. And there's nothing like it. If you get a regular uh, DVD compared to a Blu-ray, it's night and day. I mean, it's nothing like Blu-rays. I mean, what a crystal clear, wonderful picture. I'd, I haven't seen much 4Ks. So I'm not sure if they're worth it. It seems to be catching on slowly. Uh, it's hard to believe you can do better than Blu-ray, and is it worth it? I don't think it is for the money. Um, like uh, the old CDs that came out, am I going to spend $30, $80 for a 4K? I don't think so. So, so it's very important to understand that, and that is in the electromagnetic spectrum as well. So if you're getting into these kind of digital products, they're not good for this kind of energy. Digital is a man-made contrived product, just like Hertzian, and it has its purpose. But you've got to remember, this is Fred Flintstone technology when it comes to Hertzian. Figuring the world out by its electromagnetic spectrum, which we have figured out how to measure, well, it's Fred Flintstone it's really primitive. Yeah, it kind of works and it's kind of there, but it's not the answer. It's just like Newtonian physics and so forth. Yes, it explains things to a degree, but if you stay in with that, you're being enslaved by caveman technologies that have little or no value. Yes, it takes care of it. And that's, of course, that's where we are in society right now. We went from basically nothing. You got to remember that pretty much everything was discovered in the middle to late 1800s. So it's been approximately only where we've had this massive growth thanks to computers uh, and the processing of information, basically. Uh, in 100 years to God knows how many thousands of percent we've, uh, we now understand over what we before, we didn't know what oxygen was. Somebody had to figure it out by putting a plant in a bottle and gee, it dies. Now we open the bottle and it lives. So there must be something there that actually makes the plant live. It's not too long ago, people. Well, uh, it seems to us common knowledge, but it's not until you figure it out. All this happened basically mostly in the 1800s. Uh, some was previous to that, but you're talking about 1850s on up. So you're talking about in 100 years to 1950, we had all these kind of breakthroughs and then everything skyrocketed in terms of doubling and tripping knowledge every day as we reach the 1990s and into the 2000s as we get into this whole field of uh, instant information. The whole idea is when you can share information and access it virtually instantly information triples quickly because everything is put together and as I've always said um, uh, breakthroughs, discoveries, and even higher level consciousness come from personal epiphanies. 
So when you hear someone else talks, well, it doesn't mean that that's the facts, but that triggers something within you to think at a different level for yourself and what works best for you. And of course, that's what happens. So if somebody is studying the base ideas and they get it and they see it on an internet or they have books on it or watch a video, well, that then they look at it and say, gee, I could do that. And I think I should do this and add that to it. All of a sudden, you got a new discovery. You couldn't do that in the past. Uh, it's amazing, uh, not that long ago, how difficult it was to access information. I've talked about this before, and I don't think too many people understand it unless they're over 40, but it was hard getting any information. People had things like the Almanac they used to keep, which had things from weather systems, basic facts, the population of Bulgaria, these kind of things you'd have a book at home. The other thing that everybody had was a set of encyclopedias. This was your crude internet. But most of that was very quickly outdated. And yearly, you'd get an updated book, and it would have information on that. But you wanted to look up something, volcanoes. Well, go to V and look under volcano. That's what you do, and that would explain what a volcano is. And if you had a good set, it would have pictures and other things in it. But you'd have this access to information there. That was your internet. You didn't go Google it. You went and pulled it off the shelf. You looked it up, and you got the basic information there. And certainly this worked to a, a great degree, but you only had that reference, that information, and that was it. If you wanted more, you then had to go to a library or buy a book on volcanoes, so you got an entire volume on it. But you would get, I don't know how many pages were devoted to each subject, but you'd probably get five or six pages giving you the basics of what a volcano was. People don't understand that. I don't know if everybody had that. My family didn't have an official encyclopedia. you think that would be part of it, but it didn't. Uh, my father refused to buy anything, even to have educational materials there, uh, was just uh, something he refused to do. So basically, you had a bunch of stupid people, and if you wanted to do things, well, you had to go to the library. And of course, libraries were always crowded, and there was a good amount of people going there. People went to the libraries. I mean, you had to, if you had a car, and you would then drive to the library and then look through the books. No, I don't know if anybody gets that. You didn't punch it in. You didn't go to a search engine and punch in volcanoes and have this uh, unlimited free information there. It just wasn't there. So finding any information was always very difficult. And this is why uh, Dumadamia had some prestige at one time, because you, you had to be a person at going to college or researching to be able to find anything. Or you had to spend an enormous amount of time hunting this up. And I, I used to do that all the time. You'd go there and spend hours and hours in the library looking at things. I always found that interesting. So all of this happened has only happened in the last, in the last 50 years, basically, things have exploded. Because things, because of the transfer of information and new people grabbing it and putting their spin on it and, and so forth, within the last uh, 20 to 50 years, uh, we now... Uh, have just about everything on there and you can find everything uh, that you want no matter how silly, personal uh, it desires or how scientific, medical, etc. So I mean you can do an awful lot of research on the net and find good information and people want to state that uh, the internet is bad information. Where do you think it comes from? Is it any different than going to a library and pulling a book out? No. Is there problems with it in terms of anybody can put their opinions up there? Well, of course. So you have to do a little bit of filtering. But um, if you're looking for a medical condition, I'm assuming that you're going to a medical website and you get okay information. That doesn't mean that the dogma presented by uh, Demodamia medical institutions is the answer either. But the whole idea is you can look up anything. So... But we get back to the fact of the uh, bogus electromagnetic when it comes to the bioconsciousness empowerment and tools that work off of that. So they're not going to be electric tools. And this is what we think everything is. Plug it in, turn it on, and this is what people want. When you give people non-electric stuff, they think that it doesn't work. Well, this is just not true on many, many levels. And I'm going to have this whole series where we we'll continuing for a while to explain things. But when you have electric... What is that electric doing? So especially when you're talking about the um, bioconsciousness. So there's electric psychic power. How is that? There's electric healing energy. How is that? It doesn't make any sense. So, so there's a Hertzian field that creates psychic powers and everything else. Well, it's just not true. This is when you look very low level and people are trying to uh, map this and measure it. 
And to a certain degree, we have, because people that operate in these altered states always go into 7.8 or 8 hertz. This has been proven uh, through uh, people who have uh, tested psychics, remote viewers, you name it, healers. Uh, they go into this 8 hertz, plain and simple. But that's the, as I've mentioned, that's the gateway frequency for you. Past that, you're going into frequencies uh, or states of energetic being that are not measurable through Hertzian energies. So hopefully this isn't over everybody's head here, um, but you got to think about this stuff and you got to know it. Just don't think that this is some sort of field of uh, goofball, delusionary people. No, 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 that's regular science. The Dumadamia people are the delusional goofballs. Uh, when you get into the higher levels of alchemy, uh, metaphysics, high states of consciousness and gnosis, the people that uh, had the mystery schools, you're talking about very high level accessing and using of energies. Energies that are awesome, that you grab a teeny bit of it and are able to do things like move objects, teleport yourself, etc. That's because you're only grabbing a teeny bit of it. When we get into electromagnetic, basically there's nothing there uh, that can empower you because you're using outside energies that really aren't that potent unless you want to pr plug a toaster in. But advanced practices, all were very advanced. They deal with the uh, occultons, the scions, uh, which is uh, how I'm describing them now to make these things uh, much more easier. But there was all this very complicated informational energetic fields that particularly alchemicalists were working with and working with them through different uh, uh, physical uh, tools to create other physical matter. But there was something great past that. Alchemy was always thought of uh, changing base metals or the lower self into the higher self transmuting you from the physical low reality to a non-physical high reality. And that ain't electromagnet. Ow, oh, he's vibrating 16 hertz. Whoa, what is that nonsense? So we got to understand that uh, while these vibrations may have some effects, they may have some effects on the uh, physical brain. If we're talking about uh, manifestation, information, energetic fields, we're talking about non-Hertzian fields uh, that are uh, manifest everything and they create everything in the universe. They're non-Hertzian in nature. Regardless, they have some Hertzian frequencies involved in it. Well, they may have that, but ultimately the core of it is not something that uh, regular physicists have figured out it's energy and they refuse to deal with the non-physical even though it really is physical an energy field is physical but they don't want to admit this they want to uh, play some little game with you so through my different research here and how's i've been researching as of recent um the very unusual strange and bizarre character um of the uh, Michael A. Aquino, Lieutenant Colonel uh, of PSYOPs. He started the Temple of Set, etc. Uh, and of course comes from things at kind of a low level. That's the problem with all people who are uh, dark path, left-handed path people is that they get too caught up into the provable, which is really the stupid that society offers to you, common physics, etc. But he's written several books and he has a whole system of what he believes in, etc. It's very interesting that this guy who believes in metaphysical things, uh, apparently he believes in the actual reality of Set, otherwise known as Satan, as a being, which the Church of Satan, which was originally uh, what he broke away from, did not believe that. It was an archetype. So it's very interesting uh, to do that. But what has he done? He has done a lot of research in this area. And we can't, you know, trying to find out information out there is very difficult. Uh, we have certain people have been doing this. There are still people who have been researching this entire field of um, psychic phenomena. And of course, it's been researched for 150 years now. So it's nothing new and by top professionals. 
The problem is, in modern times, uh, these uh, parapsychologists, etc., aren't really doing much. They seem to write little books and they seem to be preaching to the choir. They seem to be uh, just writing stuff for their same audiences. They're not really going out anywhere and confronting anything. They allow the dumb bunkers uh, to pretty much roll over everybody. And nobody knows their names, but everybody knows who the unamazing Randy and who Penn Gillette is. Everybody knows these names of these people who are, quite frankly, very low-level bad people. And they have no education whatsoever. The two I just mentioned never even graduated high school. Is that a big requirement? And I think it's important that people do graduate high school so we can understand that they have a basic level of education there that we know they can read and write at least to a basic level. Other ones in the dumb bunker groups are convicted felons. Yes, convicted felons. Convicted of uh, felony fraud on the internet is Brian Dunning. Now, I'm not making up any of this. This is all facts. And I could go on there. But what's interesting with Michael Aquino is that he's got a very conservative um, background for a person who's supposed to be thinking outside the box. He seems to like to dress up and play Eddie Munster, dance about, do all these things, and uh, finds it, I think, he enjoys the occult play and the cosplay of it all. Uh, yet ultimately, he's coming from a very conservative background, which comes into great conflict with what he does. So he apparently uh, believes in the, quote, metaphysical meaning spirits, gods, etc., that can interact and interact with physical matter and change physical matter. Now, he doesn't believe in God that intervenes. He believes in God as a creative force. It makes stuff, which, of course, is the same thing that I believe in as well. God isn't something that helps you. It creates things and you interact with them. And that's what you're all about. Without going on, I've went into uh, all of this. Check my other lectures. So the problem is parapsychology is the lowest level. Uh, you know, there are people out there, famous ones, uh, and they're just not really doing anything. They're very closed-minded. They only put on certain people, and they're really not interested in anything that really is a higher level of thinking. Uh, they think they are, and uh, they'll go back to their stupidities, their Terrence McKenna drooling boobs that he is. All of these idiots they put on there uh, because they're basically uh, a bunch of little low-level 60 kids that uh, are stoned all the time. Uh, they do nothing, and they seem to be a real problem with the parapsychologists and alternative people confronting the skeptics. You don't see them ever debating. You don't see any, uh, you know, a Penn and Tella. Penn is uh, notorious for uh, being seen with people like Dawkins, who is a great, who's a famous uh, atheist. Uh, you see him, you don't see him debating anybody from the other side. And generally, you don't see this with anyone. You won't see this with Satanists or anything else. They're afraid to debate. They're not very intelligent people. As I've tried to uh, get EA Kinetting, uh, that goofball, into debates, he won't do it. Yeah, he, well, he, he's not very articulate and he wouldn't really stand up a chance. So, you know, I understand that that's what you do, especially, you know, most uh, Satanists are kind of cowards anyway. So the whole idea is that when you get involved in these things, nobody is a making state. But you don't see these people anywhere. And when they do talk with other people, they're talking with people they agree with. And I think that's a real problem. There's nothing wrong with that. But we need controversial discussions. We need to see both sides of it. I always find uh, discussions like that interesting. You would call it kind of a debate. But you don't see it. You saw this with atheists and uh, Christians. But you don't see anything past it. You don't see... Uh, someone going out there, a noted parapsychologist going out there, uh, Raiden, Mishlove, etc. They're not going out there talking with um, Pendulhead when he was live on Amazing Randy. No, they're, they're not doing this. They're, they're not debating these people. And they should be because that's what people look at and that's what people like to see. But uh, nobody even knows these names. Nobody knows who's Raiden or who Mishluff is. They're never going to remember these people ever. Will they remember Penn Jillette? Yes, they will. Will they remember James Randi? Yes, they will. Plain and simple. Because they unmasked people. They, uh, they did nothing of that. That's just media garbage like we're always being fed. So it's unfortunate that you have to go to these kind of sources to find interesting information. Um... 
But I've always wanted to find out what makes uh, Michael Aquino tick. As I said, I've been a researcher into the satanic cults for over 30 years. I have bumped into them consistently in my uh, occult uh, training in the past. Uh, I've known several of them who infiltrated different North pagan groups. And of course, um, they've always been on the scene and always been hanging around. Another reason why not to believe that uh, some group does everything because you can find these people infiltrating other groups and doing all sorts of things. So to uh, state that that group, because there was one of those people in that particular group, that that group thought the same way is not right. Matter of fact, the group generally thought opposite of these people. So we all need to understand where these people are coming from and what they're doing and uh, how it operates. So uh, what's interesting is that... Um, Michael Aquino is a uh, educated man with a PhD. He is a military officer, went through lots of training. I'm not sure what any of that means, but I mean, this is what normal society um, judges everybody on. The one spin to it is that he's involved in what you could call metaphysics, uh, even though it's left-hand path metaphysics. Uh, he has his own way of looking at things. And, uh, he's kind of a very strange guy. Is the fact is, is that uh, he considers the honesty of admitting, which I think to a large degree is true, though, uh, that, you know, people are bad. People have their lower tendencies. People want sex, money, and rock and roll, and that's where people are coming from. You know, you're right. That's what everybody really gets involved in. What do you think of, of a wealthy person? What does he have? Money, sex, meaning they can get what any partner they want. And many of them, if need be, so, I mean, that's what everybody wants. And that doesn't have to be uh, keyed into it. Wh who would we put out there, people who are successful? Rock and rollers who have all their groupies, take all the drugs, do whatever they want, break up their hotel rooms. What are we talking about? Heroes? What are heroes out there? James Bond? What is James Bond? He's a murderer. He kills anybody and basically uh, sexually abuses women who just uses them just to get off on. That's a hero? But he dresses nice, too. So all the whole idea is that's how uh, people look at this. So we got to understand what this concept is. So our macho concepts of what our heroes are, are based on very low level root chakra things. It's about domination uh, of your enemies, domination of the opposite sex. And this all uh, generally culminates with wealth and, and killing. So I haven't really found anything. And you know, when you listen to all these uh, parapsychologists and their excusing of Satanists and negative paths, and it's just, oh, it's nothing, it's just different. Yeah, it's different because they want to kill people and molest millions of children, and you want to sit back and do nothing. I mean, some of these people even support people that have come out who are virtually Nazis uh, who are out there, and he's a Jew and he supports them, like uh, Mishlov uh, did uh, with his big buddy. This is atrocious. In fact, uh, Mishlov also has multiple Satanists on there giving them airspace and uh, making their uh, principles come out. What's wrong with you? While well, so many other people out there are ignored. So, um, so all of these things that happen just shows you the kind of messed up out there. But what's new? That's how society is. I mean, the, uh, basically the parapsychologists, the alternative people haven't done their job to get their message out there. They're not going on TV shows. They're not doing talks. They're not doing this. Well, James Randi did. Why didn't other people do? Why weren't there parapsychologists on uh, Johnny Carson's show? So the bottom line is that uh, they're on those shows, and that's the way it goes. So, And by the way, that incident with Yuri Geller, Yuri Geller refused to perform. He didn't fail because he was set up and he knew it. By Johnny Carson, who, by the way, Johnny Carson, thank God he's dead, was giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to the James Randi organization, supporting that bogus thought form. And, of course, Johnny Carson was a real piece of work himself, known for his violence to his wives, etc. So as we move into things, we need to understand that. So I think what, but what's happened here is very interesting in the Mind War book uh, by Michael Aquino, and I highly recommend, and this is only one, he's got three different volumes like this, which I'm kind of excited to read to find out what his opinions are. Right now, I, find, I haven't found much from him, and the problem is he always falls back into the low-level uh, conservative militarism type thinking, which is going to get you nowhere. 
I already found out that uh, we know what that thinking gets you. It gets you one loss after another as a military has achieved nothing. With a trillion dollar military buzz and weapons that can destroy the world, and they can't even hold a 7 Eleven on a dark street at night. So the whole idea is that uh, these are the kind of things we look at. But let's. He's researched a lot of things. He also spent time at Echelon reading all the Russian stuff on their psychic work. And it's kind of a contradictory there, but he does not believe, and he's written a paper, which was fascinating, which I hope to dig up here someday, of going over the whole psychic program and psychic energies in general. And it's repeated in this book here, which I'm going to read a few pages to you to find out where he's coming from. I think this is very telling to serious researchers, but it confirms that, uh, and the reason why I'm going into this, it confirms the fact that biophysical energies, the bioconsciousness, is not electromagnetic in any way. And that's why I'm going to read this, because it's not. So what are we going to do? Build more devices to catch electromagnetic when it's not electromagnetic? We're going to use electromagnetic devices to amplify this? Well, no way. You have to use other energies, and of course that's why um, my new uh, tachyon neutrino graviton energy collectors um, are the cutting edge of this science to empower things. And, you know, these are very difficult energies to harness. So we're not harnessing lots of these energies. We're, we're har harnessing a teeny bit of them, but they're very potent. So here's what he says. The last half of the 20th century saw numerous experiments in thought control and extrasensory perception, some sponsored by various U.S. government agencies. Their common characteristic is they is that they do not work. They are all attempts to control thought at its expression, not at its construction. Okay? Well, you know, Aquino's very articulate, as much as we want to criticize him for other things. I'm not really sure where he's coming from. I'm not sure what he was involved in. Uh, he's been, uh, Michael Aquino's been labeled and thought to be involved in um, the very serious pedophile international rings that are out there pretty much ran by um, governments and police departments. Uh, there seems to be a huge amount of money and a giant taste uh, in terms of an interest in uh, children as sex slaves. And this has been confirmed uh, to an unbelievable degree. It's really shocking. He's been accused of this, but I can't find anything that links him to these. I tend to think that a person at his intellectual level uh, would not be involved in this. I don't know. It's hard to say. Everybody wants to claim he did it, and they, I saw him. Well, that was after he was on TV, and his Eddie, Eddie Munster a Dark Shadows haircut um, made him a person of noticing and ridicule. But you'd think that you'd get rid of that so people wouldn't be able to identify you. So p people keep using his name because he's an easy target. Was he involved in anything? I don't know. Like everything, there is a, um, a question of about 5% uh, of his entire story that doesn't check out. Does that go into the dark realm of that he's involved in this? I don't know. But there certainly is, we know who's involved in this. The military, the police, uh, most of the media. We know of all these people uh, that are out there. So um, to go after, quote, Satanists because it's porno, and that's why I like to call this stuff, it's porno. It's porno news, porno facts. And what does that mean? It means that you can't look away from it. So it just grabs your attention. You've got to look at it. And that's what I call porno. It's porno news, porno everything. So he's the porno Satanist. And uh, it's a little bit too uh, easy. That And how come he's the only one identified? Now, just so it makes sense, he's been identified after doing TV shows in Geraldo uh, that people identify him. They hear the word colonel or other things. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean he's the only one. Colonel is a cop. Colonel Saunders? Maybe he was behind it all. Maybe that's the problem. And we hear this during Colonel used. They checked to see if he had a white suit on. He was eating chicken. So we're going to be very careful. We have to find out who's behind these things and get the perpetrators, not grab a easy person to lynch because we don't like them. Plain and simple. So let's continue on here. The CIA and the Defense Department's mind control experiments of the 19... And remember, it went back to the 1950s. People think this is all stuff done in the 70s. 1950s and 1970s were in effect uh, in an effort to achieve um, 
high states of consciousness through drugs and other invasive means, which in case of drugs resulted only in confusion and disruption of the human brain's neurological functions. So they tried to use drugs uh, to trigger things. And basically, in terms of the older drugs, I'm not sure what they're using today, these didn't work very well. People who were drugged out didn't perform high states of empowerment and doing things. Now, again, I've always said this. You need drugs to um, bring down the walls in front of you. So you, the inhibition that you have internally and externally. That's what drugs are for. That's why people go to bars and stuff and they have a drink or two. But uh, that's to bring inhibitions down so you can function basically, which is at a normal level instead of being scared. Now, too little of it and you get no effects. Too much and you're an idiot. And that's the problems with, with alcohol because alcohol is very hard to regulate because it takes so long to get in your system through the stomach. But if done correctly, alcohol is a great in inhibitor, a disinhibitor, I should say. But it's difficult to use and uh, can be very destructive to the body in many ways. So, but using things like ayahuasca, LSD, um, all the things we talk about out there, again, uh, in a very controlled and therapeutic environment, have their uses, particularly for schizophrenics. And for average people, they, they initially seem to get something from it. After that, it's very destructive. This series of programs completely miss the point that thoughts are the manifestation of mental cohesion, not dis integration, which since it harms the subject is impermissible in the mind war technology. Now, this is the name of the book is Mind Wars, and I will um, give a review on this uh, by itself in the future. But that, again, it's hard to explain this in an audio, but... Um, Drugs don't create a cohesion, they create a disintegration, so he claims. So that's an interesting uh, way of looking at it. So it's distorting you, and by distorting you, you're taking away the normal empowerment and distorting it into a non-empowered state if you go too far. If you distort it a little bit and you can understand and generate and concentrate and direct your energies, you become empowered because you have taken down the usual blockages that your regular sewer mind just put out. You can't do this. You know, it's never going to happen. It's just nonsense. That's what your teacher tell you. That's what your priest tell you. So this is what you have to then uh, disenable in your life. I mean, that's what your brain is telling you. That's what your common mind is telling you. You have to get rid of that. And by using dif disinhibitor, particularly drugs, alcohol, marijuana, etc., um, you're able to uh, reach higher states and see things differently. That's why everybody sees a little differently when they're drunk or high, and they tend to wax theoretic or, or, or philosophical, philosophize. So people tend to philosophize, they think differently, they see greater meanings, because what's happening? The, your brain or your mind is not telling you, well, only look at it, it's just a can. Well, no, who you care? It's a can, you put liquid in it. So, but when you uh, have disinhibited yourself, well, this is a vessel for holding things. Look at the shape of it. Look at how it's, it, it works. It's a perfect little invention. So the whole idea is that that's how things look. So Beginning in 1970, the first CIA and then S uh, NSA and finally DOG, uh, DOD, Department of Defense. He's, he's giving you a chain of command here, apparently, of how um, SRI was funded, which may have interest to people who study these government agencies. So apparently the CIA started the Stargate remote viewing program. The NSA took it over, and apparently the Department of Defense um, ultimately uh, finally took over the program and spent $20 million series of ESP experiments together with Stanford Research Institute. And originally, the um, project was called Scanate. Remember, Project Scanate. I'm not sure what that was. And finally, retitled uh, Project Stargate. And you got to remember, this $20 million was spent over uh, 20 years. It's a pittance.
Stargate attempted uh, attempted remote viewing experiments, which failed. Attempted remote viewing experiments, which failed due to the simple fact that the transmission of visible information to the brain does not occur outside of the visible electromagnetic spectrum, which is approximately 400 to 790. It puts Tertz here, Hertz. So here we go again, because we're talking about the electromagnetic, which doesn't project far. Very, very interesting. Um, and he's claiming it failed. Well, here again is a very typical Aquino jump. Excuse me. And you have to wonder what he's reading and writing. There are mountains of um, research that was done by SLR with remote viewing. Thousands and thousands of pages. There were other thousands and thousands of pages done by the operative military group that used this that worked on it for years. And there's huge amounts of data there that if he wanted to, I'm assuming he could access. Thousands and thousands of pages from what I understand. A lot of this has even been put on the internet now. And he claims that. Now, that's not what most remote viewers think. People like um, Joe McConnell. Who else is out there? I can't think of these people's names out there. There's a whole bunch of people in that program. They've all written books. And they've all stated that they did quite well. Uh, McConnell is keeping to the 60% correct level, which is awful low. Uh, but he claims that there's a 60% rate of being success there. Uh, while most state it's more like 80 to 90 percent, which again is difficult to prove. There are many. Lynn Buchanan, that's another guy who's a government um, operative who's teaching people today and continues to try and seek a government operatives uh, to work with him to think that that program has ended like hell it has. Uh, he's recruiting people today for the CIA, etc. This has been stated in several books, particularly by one of his prize students who was asked to work for the government by him. So all this is going on. There also is a huge investment group written by a civilian that does remote viewing with a bunch of top. All the other top remote viewers are in a investment type club. They claim they do well. They're still operating. You'd think that they would be super rich by now. And if they are, uh, they're not stating that. Their whole idea was to prove remote viewing by making lots of money with it. They claim they've done it, claim they haven't done it. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, as I said, I'm dubious with all of these things. People have claimed to have uh, won the lottery by remote viewing the numbers. And this has been documented in two occasions out of Texas, I believe, where people won smaller pots. But, you know, I think it was hundreds of thousands or maybe a million or two, not super big ones. So he's disregarding that. He's also disregarding of the uh, tens of thousands of pages he got from Esalon that, went, uh, that translated all the Russian documents from the 70s when all this was coming out and they were studying psychic power. Uh, there's all sorts of information on there that has documented uh, what is the biophysical, uh, the bioconsciousness, proving uh, that they're doing. And all sorts of other weird stuff that was there. Um, psychotronic tools, certain shapes, great energies, all these things uh, which have been very fair verified. But he goes on here, it's impossible for EMS waves in this range to survive coherency through atmospheric interfer uh, interference at the, ex at the extensive distances proposed by SRR. So he's saying the electromagnetic frequencies cannot stay together, stay coherent when you're talking about any kind of distance. It's not electromagnetic current. Colonel, I'll have some biscuits with that. So um, more uh, more over the electro the electrical impulses 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 within the brain are far too weak even to escape the skull much less travel any distance beyond it well this is true you do put out electromagnetic frequencies and energies um, 
This is not exactly correct. I've heard other things that say it can light a light bulb, I don't know how many watts, uh, that the brain is, is, is putting out and has a lot, a lot more energy than people think it is. But it's not potent. It's not a 100-watt bulb. It's not going to be able to power your toaster, uh, anything like that. The energy that's there, and it's not supposed to be. These are carrier waves. Get it? They're carrier waves. They're carrying the non-electromagnetic waves over, but they have to have something over it. They're what you call channels. I've been talking about this for years. It's the carrier waves. We always, just like uh, the two bands we're using of today and the transmitters, they're not producing energies. They're not amplifying. They're, you're, the energies come there, they piggyback onto these, and then they're projected out and amplified by piggybacking effects. That's how it works. So if you measure the energies coming out of the human skull and everything else, it is minuscule, very little. Some people give it more than that. We've had new researchers say that it can be powerful, but it's still not powerful enough. I don't care how strong it is. It's not going to light uh, more than a watt, a 10 watt bulb or something ridiculous. So it's not going to put out any kind of serious energies uh, to power in the, uh, what we consider plugging, uh, you know, as I mentioned, a toaster or anything else in. You're not going to get anything by doing that. It's just not strong enough. So we're not generating watts of power. Uh, these are microwatts. And they do go past the skull, but not very far. You're not projecting out electromagnetic fields very far. He said, don't even leave the skull. Well, you know, again, he's underemphasizing and taking uh, information that is a little bit outdated here. So that's not true. Meanwhile, unconnected with SRI or the government, the transformation project in San Francisco and they're not connected with the government, was collecting vast amounts of uh, records. And, you know, this is another thing. So Kino was pushed out of this program and not allowed in. So he's a little bit uh, jealous and hateful of SRI. He was not part of it as far as I understand. He may have wanted to get in and other things, but I have a feeling there was a negativity towards him and whatever. And certainly he's stating it here. He doesn't give it any credibility. You want that hang around your research? No. But there's this other transformation project in San Francisco was collecting vast amount of, of, of records and published results of various government and university experiments in the field of EAS, ESP from both Western and Eastern blocks, as well as non-aligned countries. So he was getting uh, this organization, I've never heard of them, and I'm not sure if they published any, I think he explains it more, was collecting data from everybody, not just trying to produce their own or test it. They were collecting from everywhere in the world, east, west, and anybody who would talk. The range and scope of these files far exceed anything in the CIA and defense intelligence libraries on the topic. What's interesting is that the CIA and the Defense Intelligence apparently have a large library on psychic powers. <laughs> That's what that tells me. Uh, so the whole idea is this library compiled uh, huge amounts of information, uh, but the government still had all this. So if you think of nothing, you think they're not involved in this stuff, it's nonsense. And of course, they certainly should. You should be looking at anything that gives you an edge on the enemy. One of the most rigorous and conclusive analysis was conducted in 1977. Now we're getting back here. Now we're talking about many, many years ago when this, this is when everything was happening. Uh, the uh, early 70s into the uh, early 80s. So it was conducted in 1977 by E. Balaski and J.G. Uh, uh, Taylor of the Department of Mathematics, King's College, London. Again, I've heard it. I think that's the Taylor we've heard of, which um, has done a lot of psychic research and was um, discredited because the unamazing Randy went there and made a fool of him. So, um, and this is out of King's College, London, where a lot of things were done. So they had lots of details reports on their finding. Uh, here he has in the uh, footnotes here, a to light a flashlight... Bulb, a human would need to generate 30 million times his present level of brain current. 30 million times to light a flashlight bulb, which runs on about, what are those, 3 volts? 
unamplified brain waves can't be detected beyond, beyond EEG electrodes pasted on the body. And such detection is far too crude to be decoded into coherent visual images. Everybody get that? And of course, there's a couple of key words here. Unamplified is one of them. So um, decoded. So the whole idea is that uh, it would take 30 million times the energy we commonly have to light a flashlight bulb. So I think that's very important. So it shows that we're not producing high amounts of electromagnetism in our brain. It is present, and it's a small amount used as a carrier wave. The Transformation Project was established in 1976 by Michael Murray, founder of the Echelon Institute in Big Sur. James Hickman and Steve Donovan as a database um, of over 9,000 files to collate the world's research on ESP. So, and I guess that was, was it then? I'm assuming it, they did that in 90. So they have these 9,000 files they put together. You don't hear much about the Esalen Institute or this work. They had dialogued extensively and exhaustedly with Soviet ESP scientists and traveled widely in the USSR through the 70s. So they went over there and talked to everybody uh, and got there. Murphy wrote up the results in his thinly disguised, which is interesting. He didn't write a, um, a book that was uh, non-fiction or instructive, like uh, Behind the Iron Curtain, Psychic Discoveries, or the so a thinly disguised fiction, such as Jacob Abbott in 1977 and The End to Ordinary History in 1982. I've never read those, never heard of those before. Again, we can add that to my uh, huge list of things that I have to read. So that ought to tell you what was going on and what we want. You got to remember that um, there's two things nice about Eastern Europe is their lack of religion dogma, thinking that, of course, that all this is evil. And, of course, you know, basically Eastern Europe is still very religious and they tend to be Orthodox Christians. Uh, there's Russian Orthodox. There's other belief systems as well. But they don't have the fanatical kind of hillbilly belief in the United States uh, that we have in our silly little uh, southern churches. So that's very interesting. Uh, uh, it's going. So we're going to um, end here pretty soon. Let me get to a point, and then I'll pick this up in part two. Apparently, there was an article on all this in Nature Magazine uh, 276, November 2nd of 1978. After reviewing previous experiments, attempting to test ESP, uh, ESP for uh, electromagnetic emissions, B and T declared their dissatisfaction because of the in because of the um, in precious test conditions exclude of parts of the electromagnetic spectrum uh, spectrum. So what what they're saying here is that uh, ESP didn't really have any electromagnetics in it at all. and uh, reported how inadequate it was trying to do that. So you know, they're trying to judge things electromagnetically and they couldn't find really any in psychic power. They had determined to cover the entire electromagnetic spectrum and do so under the most rigorous test conditions possible. So instead of just using all the regular things, they're gonna do everything to find out what was the core of ESP in the electromagnetic. Uh, well, there ain't none. The battery of sensors they assembled, including, so they put together every possible thing to detect, to detect electromagnetism in the bio-consciousness, which is non-electromagnetic in nature. So uh, you're trying to have detectors to pick up things that are not there. So this is where they made the big snake. They used everything, magne magnometers, skin electrodes, electrometers, loop antennas, crystal detectors, horn uh, antenna, thermocouples, electric th th thermometers, infrared detectors, ultraviolet detectors. Many of these sensors overlapped one another's frequency range. And although they covered the entire EMS from zero to um, three times 10 to the fifth gigahertz, 
because the first experiment could be conducted because the first experiment could be conducted, extensive test running of all these sensors had uh, occurred in order to record and filter out irrelevant EM noise in the uh, test areas, including passing cars, TVs, uh, station broadcasts. Readings were recorded on strip chart recordings, videotape recorders, and direct photographs of oscilloscopes and frequency analyzer screens. This is before the days they had any video type stuff. The efficiency of this battery of devices was quickly evident and the study was concluded. Meaning that uh, they figured all this stuff worked well. And here's their conclusion which we'll end part one with. We've tried to detect EMF signals emitted by humans in the particular Fourier spectrum of, sig of such signals. Fourier, whatever that means in the beginning stages, I guess. Fourier, the, over the first end. To test the reality of the ESP phenomena, all experiments fail to yield any unusual EM radiation. It is possible to conceive um, transmissions of EM energy from one person to another or of emissions from one person in a matter undetectable by the apparatus we have used. So, um, this is fairly poorly written. This would have been uh, so if very brief pulses of EM energy were used in such signaling with time less than the response time of the corresponding apparatus at the frequency used. There are no known mechanisms in the body able to produce such signals at this power level required to produce the effects. So whatever that other gobbledygook there, which was very poorly written, um, what, what it boils down to, but let me finish this. We have also found that humans are insensitive, insensitive to low levels of EM. A possible mechanism for such signaling is therefore clearly ruled for telepathy, distant viewing. The EM levels emitted to achieve metal bending in the microwave range to achieve the desired focusing are JALs, um, which, uh, and there is no known mechanism in the body to achieve a peak power output of this level. It is difficult to suppose that this would be the possible that this would be possible without severe tissue damage, meaning if they got into um, if you started putting out microwaves to, to the immense, uh, to the extent that microwave like ovens do, that would be damaging. So let's go over this a little bit, but this is a very closed-minded and stupid um, actual research. But if you're an electromagnetic scientist where you think every is in the electromagnetic spectrum, this makes sense. So basically it's saying the body is unable to produce high levels of electromagnetic energy to really send any kind of information to another or in any way whatsoever or to affect physical matter. That humans are in are um, insensitive to low levels of electromagnetism. So the body is not sensitive to low levels of electromagnetism, which may not be true either. You know, the body tends to work on very low frequencies, not high frequencies. High frequencies work like a, a fire hose to kind of blow everything away. Uh, well, uh, what really works is probably an eyedropper of water you would drop on somebody to pass information. So they're, again, they're thinking that it's volume and not quality. Uh, Non-electromagnetic spectrum uh, informational energy cells are packed with information. So these uh, projections are packed with energy. They're just not energetic in um, electromagnetic frequencies. And there is no known mechanism for the, the human mind and consciousness to produce huge electromagnetic fields that could actually affect any physical matter. And if they were able to do this, this would be such a strong level that it would actually cause damage to the 
bio tissues, etc. So that's what how they looked at it, which is really kind of comical. I'm going to pick it up in uh, part two here. We've been going on, but this is very important to understand this whole area. So. The electromagnetic nature, when you look at it and you put meters on the human body and everything, it just does, can't produce that. It can't produce anything that is going to be notable. You can't run your toothbrush, more or less, a um, toaster or other things. It just isn't enough, and nor would you. Why do you want that? That's why we have generators. That's why we have um, uh, things we plug into, and people are using you know, hundreds, thousands of watts what is a hair dryer? Two, you see them, the bigger they are, 2,000 watts. Well, this is a huge amount of energy that they're generating. So you can't do that with your bioconsciousness. It just isn't possible. Your body's not set up to do that because why would you? That's, that's those kind of things. It's like saying, you know, can you start a fire with your mind? Well, do you really want to? That's what we have matches and other things for. Do you really need to use that energy to start? So the whole idea is you don't produce enough energy to start a psychic fire, uh, regardless of what uh, we've seen in, uh, what was that, Stephen King did that? Was that Carrie that had fire start? Oh, there's a book called The Fire Starter, wasn't there? But the point is that these kind of things are not possible to do psychically that we know of. It may be a way to harness uh, your actual uh, bio consciousness energies that you can condense them down to do anything with we don't know but it is not within the biomagnetic spectrum that you can create enough energy like that you can't run a light you can't start fires you can't do anything but that's not the point those are physical things we're talking about doing things in a completely different reality and using a completely different type of energy which is non-electromagnetic because that is a very limited spectrum and it requires very crude energy. I mean, uh, most of our electrical generating devices uh, are very inefficient. Uh, and you have to generate it. You have to, you have to spin a generator using some sort of other energy source. That's what a generator does. But a generator doesn't work on the atmosphere. You've got to use gasoline. You've got to use oil. Uh, these are generators that you then spin that create electricity that then you plug things into. You know, I don't think people know all this stuff. I don't think people actually um, understand how the common things of life work in terms of all of these things. So um, there's a great misunderstanding here of all of this kind of nonsense. So um, we need to all fully understand uh, the concept of that. So what are we talking about here? as kind of a, a roundup is the fact that the biophysical, the bioconscious energies are not electromagnetic. And I've been saying this for many months now, and I've always said it in the past that we didn't really know. Now I've confirmed it 100% of how much of that. There is a very slight factor of the bioelectric because you're, in a, bio, you're a biochemical electric organ. You're a chemical battery. Most batteries are chemicals anyway. You're putting two chemicals together that cause a reaction. So you're pretty much the same. You're a bio battery. But it's not a big strong battery. That bio battery is designed to kind of keep the flow of the non-physical energies. Your chi, your chakra energies. This is what really you live on. But the actual primitive battery keeps this moving at a very micro voltage range. Because you don't need a lot of voltage. A lot of voltage doesn't serve the purpose. It doesn't need, it's not even helpful. Matter of fact, it's counter-helpful. We know that voltage is going to kill you, or current kills you. I forget which one of those are, but it, it, you can take, I think you can take a lot of voltage, you can't take a lot of current. But the whole idea is that this is what powers everything at a base level, but it, that's the base level. So to get into the creation of higher level energies, the essence of man getting into manipulation of the God particle as they state, or the, uh, the controlling of informational energetic fields, which are made up of tachyons, um, neutrons, and gravitons, all of these are made together and they, they come together in these fields that you then, by interaction with scions, which is basically just an informational uh, source of energy that connects into the occulton made up of these other things. So that can come from anywhere. 
Uh, we have scions that we produce ourselves for particular purposes, but the universe is producing these and interacting with, with the uh, energies all the time to create things like gases and stars, etc. That's how everything is created. And this process is slow and so forth. So it doesn't happen over months, years. Or, uh, it may take millions of years for all these energies to keep building on each other. So what does that tell us? Well, what this whole thing is telling us is that there is no powerful electromagnetism in the human body bioenergy. So you can't produce it, you don't produce it, and it's as simple as that. So if you're thinking in electromagnetic fashion and you think that you're pushing all this energy out, uh, to manipulate and make things happen, well, you're not doing it. And why would you? You know, if you have an electric gun, so to speak, and you plugged it into the wall, and of course you're drawing all, you're going to shoot out electrons at something. Well, that doesn't make anything. doesn't energize anything. You're getting an electromagnetic energy field um, in your body. And basically, if you did this in a concentrated effort, you've got a taser or stun gun. Well, how does that help anything? That certainly doesn't make anything. So if you take a stun gun and you shoot it into the air, you're not going to make anything from it, no matter how much you concentrate on it. If you shoot a taser or a stun gun into a person, it's just going to knock them out, even potentially kill them, disrupting all the energies in your body because it's too much. Remember, you're working on tiny micro volts. So what do you want to do? Make up an electromagnetic device that grabs non-electromagnetic energy, condenses and projections all these fields that is not what they are? So that's kind of silly. That's like trying to make a machine that catches water when you're trying to make a machine that makes fire. It just doesn't make sense. So this is where common sciences went wrong, where they continue to go wrong, where they get stuck in the electromagnetic. And there are many scientists, and maybe all of them, who agree that the electromagnetic makes everything. If it's not electromagnetic, it doesn't exist. Because everything we know in this world is electromagnetic to some degree, which is completely and totally incorrect. It's more of the closed-minded stupidness that we run into with scientists in general. So... Um, this, of course, closes the doors again to the types of energy. Now, in the past, there was called the ether, and the ether was more of this non-electromagnetic energy that powered things. And we know that these powers can work, and, they, uh, and the non-electromagnetic is generally what is used throughout the universe. They're using this higher energy. Basically, they're using uh, cultons that they then... Um, manipulate and condense into whatever they need for their particular purpose. And this is how the universe runs and how we have to start thinking. So we went through these primitive stages. We've now got to get into the really energetic nature of the universe, the non-physical nature of the universe, and start using non-electromagnetic fields energies. And just because they're hard to find doesn't mean they don't exist and that we ignore that. Most of what we look at today, we've ignored the fact. People didn't even think there were germs. Nobody even washed their hands. They figured the fact is, is that, well, you don't do that. People would operate and go from room to room, and they wonder why people get, get got sicker until somebody decided, well, gee, maybe we should wash our hands. Maybe we're dragging something with us. This is not that long ago, people. To think that science today is any better is very ignorant. It's worse. It's just as ignorant as it was before. We still have the same stupid ideas, except they're just a little more sophisticated. But in terms of understanding the bigger picture, they don't. Well, scientists won't even take what is viable and usable right now and put it into action. They want to ignore that. So what are we going to do with people that ignore things? Now, and part of the problem is scientists refuse to stand up for new technology that is clean and works. They want to keep giving the psychotic, murdering scum, otherwise known as politicians and military, deadlier and deadlier weapons that will destroy us. They are the core of it. They keep it going. It's about time that they stand up and not allow this or produce technologies that can be used in such horrible and harmful ways. It also should be the scientific community that comes out and say, no, we're going to use hydrogen power. We don't need to burn oil. And this should be on every scientist's lips every day of the week until it's instituted. 
They don't do that. Why? Well, they're scum. They're immoral, backward-thinking scum. Well, let's not hold anybody up to any high degrees here that somehow it's only the politicians and the military. Somebody is feeding them their technology, and that needs to stop. So hopefully this is clear to people. I think it's fascinating. This has uh, needed a good explanation, and this is only part one. We have lots more to come to define this.